Hello everyone, I am Triple J and welcome to Brain Food at the Movies where I'll be discussing a review, my review, of Legendary's new movie, Godzilla. <laughs> coming down from just a huge energy high of excitement from seeing this movie and it's just fantastic. So let's get the first thing out of the way as we are discussing an American made Godzilla movie. I present to you an image taking from Kamikaze Expo. That's right, this movie is 100% Matthew Broderick free. So that's the first good thing about it. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, I guess this movie is fantastic. Oh my god, just so fantastic. Uh, excuse me, I'm just really tired and I'm at home and I've, I've had just a little bit of whiskey and it's just, it's, god damn it's fantastic. Holy smokes. I don't think I've ever seen Godzilla done justice like this before by anyone else. Like, not, not even by imitators. You know, uh, Gappa was alright, and Gorgol was just meh, British. You know, the suit actor, you know what they did in Gorgol? They never even took a full rocket to the face in that suit. They just superimposed explosions. I mean, the real suit actors in the Japanese Godzilla films, they're like, here, stand here, and we're going to detonate explosives all over your suit. And Gorgol was like, no, no, that's, no, 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 too far back. We superimposed him images. So just, explosions. We won't detonate anything onto you. Just, no, 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 no. Terrible, terrible idea. Okay, so this movie is just fantastic. It's, wow. Uh, first thing I will say, I think that in making Pacific Rim, they learned a lot of really good lessons about how to digitally animate giant monsters. Because these monsters move with the mass and weight that they have in, you know, Earth's gravitational pull. You know, it, you know it's not, not exactly super fast, you know, not like the 98 Geno movie. It, and they move, like, they, they weigh millions and millions of tons. And... Oh, <laughs> it's just so good. Uh, I, I will say this. I think one of the... Uh, this movie did a really good job of balancing the human drama with the drama of, you know, trying to survive a world with these giant monsters in it. Uh, just fantastic job. And, and what you actually do see, like, this movie just ups and shows you, you know, Humanity, you don't know shit. You, I mean, you may know you think something, but you are just really rock stupid in a lot of ways. And, like, the, the humans at one point are thinking, well, we're going to use a nuclear weapon, and that will solve everything. And Ken Watanabe, as Dr. Serizawa, is like, uh, no, we tried that before. We really did didn't work. It's probably a bad idea. And this leads to other developments in the film, which just, it just ratchets us up the, the, you know, everything that's at stake here. Yeah, it's just, God, it was so fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, like, <laughs> it was just so damn good. Holy smokes. Uh, of course, uh, part of the human drama is about um, Brody Sr., as played by the Breaking Bad dude. Um, um, I don't know, I can't remember his name at this point. I'll, I'll figure it out later. Uh, and his son, and there's a relationship between you know his son, the father's just devastated after losing his wife to um, a, a nuclear meltdown. And then you know, it drives his son away, and he grows up, and he becomes, you know, involved in the army, the son does, and 
I tell you, the trailers are pretty sneaky about this. Uh, I'm trying not to include any spoilers, uh, but the, you know, the Breaking Bad dude, you know, he doesn't have as prominent a role as you think he does. But good lord, Brian Cranston, that's his name, Brian Cranston. He's. Between him and Ken Watanabe, they carry a lot of the emotional acting in this film. Like, just. Whew. I mean, they must have been, like, as strong as Godzilla. They really carried the acting in this film because that Aaron Taylor guy. I heard someone on CBC Radio talk about how he's a good actor. Honestly, his was just, eh, was just enough. I, I didn't really feel it. Brian Cranston and Ken Watanabe, they helped carry this film. You know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> just so damn good. Yeah. Holy smokes. This was Godzilla. This is Godzilla. This is a goddamn force of nature. And the plot of this movie is that, well, first off, it was like millions of years ago, you know, when Earth was still fairly, you know, warm and radioactive and all that stuff, uh, it was like these giant, big old dinosaur type things are like running around, ooh, radiation, nom, 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 nom. And then as the radiation, radiation went, uh, went, you know, went down, uh, they decided, you know, uh, we're going to take it easy. And the top of those, uh, that top of that, you know, food chain was Godzilla. Now it ends up as, well, <laughs> humanity kind of fucked up, in, you know, World War Two, you know, and after World War Two, you had, you know, the nuclear testing and everything. It drew up some of the monsters that were hiding, you know, deep in the ocean and, you know, deep in the Earth's crust, and it's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, uh, damn, we shouldn't have done that. And it even tried nuking Godzilla a couple of times. It, it, it didn't quite work. He only was like, it's like, mm, yes, mm. Uh, yes, age 52, radiation, mm. Uh, mm, quite good, yes, mm. you know, the only thing is, uh, the problem isn't Godzilla, amazingly, it's the Mutos, massive, unidentified, terrestrial organism, and these things, wow, they look fantastic, uh, they have some similarities to the Cloverfield monster, and it's just, it's nice, but I also, like, I also saw some similarities to one of Gamera's main films, uh, Gauss, in which it's kind of like a, got like a triangle head and like glowing eyes, and it has an EMP attack, and it just looks fabulous. And these things are just, they're causing havoc, because they're kind of like insects. You got a male, and you got a female. And they're going to get together, and they're going to do their thing, and then there's going to be a hell of a lot more of those things. In, in a way, it's kind of like a like a shot at at the '98 Godzilla movie, uh, but uh, you know, Gareth Edwards said, "No, no, 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 no. This is how we do it." Meanwhile, Sarah's always like, "Godzilla is not the main threat. These mutuals are. Godzilla is going to put everything back in balance." And, you know, the, the U.S. Army is like, no, no, uh, we can take care of this. Um, nuclear bombs. And then Sarazawa is like, um, uh, uh, bad idea, bad idea. Just, <laughs> and it's actually a nice slow buildup. You know, what they do with the slow buildup and review of, re, 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 reveal of the Mutos and Godzilla, it's akin to, uh, so that was Spiel, one of Spielberg, uh, Spielberg's first great blockbuster hit, Jaws. It slowly builds up, and it builds up, and it builds up, and it ramps up, and then boom! Godzilla and Muto duking it out. Uh, Godzilla and Duko. And Godzilla and Muto, I'm tired, partially drunk. Godzilla and Muto duking it out in Hawaii. And then Godzilla and two Mutos duking it out in San Francisco and it is as epic a fight as you would think it would be uh, it's God it's as good as anything I saw in Pacific Rim like I was coming out I came out of this movie just buzzing oh it was so damn good uh, and <laughs> again I'm trying not to reveal 
reveal too much. I think I may have had said one or two spoilery ish things. One thing I will say, uh, there's some really beautiful cinematic stuff. Like the scenes in Japan, it actually had like this giant mountain, very reminiscent. I think it was it meant to be Mount Fuji, and it looked like a matte painting from the Showa series. It just looked beautiful, and I really do love that they went that extra effort and added that in. Another thing is is that Brian Cranston and his son, uh, well, Brian Cranston's character and his son, they go to get some important information, and it's been 16 years since the incident at the nuclear power plant. And everything in, within that district, which has been you know, sealed off by the Japanese government, is all overgrown by, by nature, reclaimed by nature. And it just looked hauntingly beautiful. And it really makes me think that if they do ever make the Last of Us movie that I hear they're making, they're going to be able to do it. And, and again, just... Oh, oh. Oh, this is so damn good. The fights were just fantastic. It, holy smokes. Godzilla uses his beam attack three times in this movie. And each time it is fantastic. You, you never get... It just... Wow. It was, it was really, really good. And, and just the overall message of this film. Like, you know... We of that we really don't know what we're doing it's half the time. It, it, it's really good. This is oh man. If this was any kind of sequel or spiritual successor, this is a spiritual successor to original Fifty Four Godzilla, which is you know we don't know what the fuck we're doing half the time, and you know we really do screw things up when we're even when we're trying to fix them. You know that's just part of humanity. Just go back to the screen here. It's just, it's got a really strong, subtle soundtrack, which I gotta get off of iTunes here. And, oh my god, it was so good. Oh boy. It, a, couple, a couple of smaller things I do like. Uh, it, it's a, you actually do, we actually do see a diverse, a diverse cast in this, you know. It's got, you know, not just aside from Brian Cranston, but we can we got Ken Watanabe. We've actually got people of color who are, you know, in command in, in, in the military. Uh, we've actually got two really rather touching scenes of two families of color, one Japanese and one black, that are reunited after the after Godzilla and Muto strike. And I just thought that was really good. And it also made me think that, hey, a movie with a giant radioactive lizard had more people of color in it than the fucking Hobbit. Yeah, sorry. I'm not letting that one go. Nope. Nope. It, it even had, like, a, a black bus driver who had to have been, like... There's actually some really smart smart writing in it. He's, they're evacuating everyone else San Francisco. This is not too spoilery, don't worry. And they've got, you know, kids in a hospital in one bus. And the bus driver is there, and the military just starts attacking Godzilla. But the problem is, a lot of the uh, Godzilla's near the Golden Gate Bridge. They're on the Golden Gate Bridge. And, like, and uh, everything's like, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And the bus driver's like, fuck this. I got kids. I'm out of here. Get out of town. Just fucking, just fucking gets out. Just like, saves the kids. Saves the kids. Which, you know, accurate portrayal black people in a movie is like giant fucking monster explosions ever i'm out I'm, I'm gone i will see you tomorrow i'll come back for my stuff next week when everything is over out so eh, eh, again the fight scenes with muto and godzilla are really well done uh they all act like animals the mutos actually act like insects because I mentioned there was you know, a male and a female. The female is actually much bigger than the male, which I thought was really cool. And there's a lot of good emoting on Godzilla's part. Godzilla himself is definitely a, a character. He's not just like a force of nature, but he's also this giant animal. He's actually a thinking animal. And you see him, you know, 
thinking about, uh, in some parts about how to deal with the Muto. And how he deals with them is really fucking cool. Uh, one, of my, uh, one of my new friends on Facebook, uh, Robert Evans of the Retro Rangers, called it a fuck you moment. And he had a couple of them. One of which includes, you know, his atomic breath, which just looks fantastic. Overall, great movie. I do wish there was a bit more monster action, but again, I felt that the human drama was really well paced throughout the movie so as to enhance the monster drama. It really ups the ante in this movie. It's just, just, excuse me, just great. Uh, one note I do want to mention before I stop off here were the previews. And I don't care about Tom Cruise. I don't care about that new sci-fi movie he's in. I don't care. I don't really care. And then there was other one with a new Adam Sandler movie and Drew Barrymore called Blended. Where they go to Africa to mend their soulful spirit bullshit. I don't know. And while I'm watching this trailer, I'm thinking what country in Africa? What country in Africa? They just say, oh, we're going to Africa and we're going to get better. And like, what country in Africa? There, there's a lot there. It's a giant, it's the largest land mass on the planet. Which fucking country is it? Just is it Nigeria? Is it Algeria? Is it Egypt? South America? South Africa? Zimbabwe? Fucking something. Oh, just... Oh, God. How's Adam Sandler still making movies? How's Adam Sandler still making movies? I know my friend would love this, but they fucking gave Danning Chatham Magic Mike, whatever the hell his name is, Jump... 22 street up your butt. I don't know. I don't care. He's getting another goddamn movie. And they're going to university this time. Oh my god. He's fucking gambit. Oh god. <laughs> so, that is my slightly drunken, very tired, very fatigued. Definitely two thumbs up. Two big to a big toe up, everything up, just great movie, go and see it, you will love it, it has a bit of a slow build in the beginning, but then, wow, you get some really nice shots of Godzilla, <laughs> just go see this movie, it is great, I'm Triple J, I'm going to finish this whiskey and coke, and then I'm going to bed. Later.